Good morning, my rogue readers. My name is Erin Rogoff, and welcome back to my booktube channel, where today's topic is the Fear Street series by R.L. Stein. I know Halloween is over, but that does not mean that I have to stop reading horror-themed books. I forgot actually how much I loved R.L. Stein's books until now, so anyway, shall we continue with my little review for The Lost Girl? The genre is a young adult fiction, horror, mystery, paranormal, fantasy novel, and it is book three of the Fear Street relaunch series, of which I have all three books. And there are several other books by R.L. Stein that I do have, that I have read, and some that I have not read yet, but some of them include Can You Keep a Secret, The Dead Boyfriend, Give Me a K-I-L-L, -L, Party Games, and Don't Stay Up Late. Now, for Don't Stay Up Late, that's kind of ironic just because I always stay up late reading, and it gets pretty interesting. Like, if I am reading, and I am so into a book, but I am so tired, and my body is falling asleep, but my mind is racing, I will literally get out of bed, walk around my room with the book in my hand, and I'll just be like, okay, gotta keep reading gotta keep reading or I will get a cup of coffee and then I'll have that and then another one and then another cup of coffee and then I'll continue reading. So anyway, as far as the summary goes with this book, there's a strange but beautiful new girl at Shady Side High School named Lizzie Walker and nobody knows much about her. There are so many questions about her such as where did she live before moving to Fear Street? Where is it she does live in Fear Street? Who does she live with? Where are her parents? And she stole food from a grocery store, so is she poor? And there is the main male protagonist named Michael, who is drawn to Lizzie, even if she didn't tell him her first name from the start. Because when she was at the grocery store and walked out with the food, she sees Michael's dog, and then she asks, what's the dog's name? And so then Michael says, Mindy. And Lizzie says, Mindy? Oh, that's my name. It's Mindy Barker. That does not make sense. And then the other name that she uses is Mary Real. And that's just a totally made up name. It doesn't make sense. And so I'm wondering, why would she lie to him about her name? Because that just doesn't make sense. Does she even know him? Does he know her? What's going on? Anyway, Michael invites Lizzie to join him and his friends on a day in the snow. Snowmobiles will be involved here. And the day ends in a terrifying accident. The thing is, with me, I am adventurous and somewhat reckless at times. But I would just consider me wanting to go snowmobiling adventurous, not reckless. And we come to find out that the snowmobile accident is just the beginning of horrors, and Michael wonders, Lizzie can't be the one responsible for all this. Can she? And I was also wondering what the connection between Lizzie and the past was in the 1950s preface. Is she actually the first girl, Beth? Beth died in 1950, right? Or is Lizzie her tormented soul seeking a form of revenge? That's just what I was thinking when I was starting to read the book, and now I actually know all that happens. It is such a great book. I don't know how some people can consider it um, forgettable, because it wasn't forgettable to me. As far as the character analysis goes, Beth Palmieri, she is the protagonist of the 1950s preface, and she is the daughter of a stable boy turned stable owner whose former boss is plain evil. And Beth rejected Aaron, who is the nephew of her dad's former boss. And Aaron told his dad that Beth rejected him, so he wanted to get back at Beth's dad because she rejected Aaron. If that makes any sense, I commend you, because that's hard for me to say anyway. And the sad thing about Beth is that she watched her father get brutally killed after being kidnapped by his ex-boss. And I am letting you know now that this scene in particular is not for the faint of heart. This 
this one scene had my own heart racing when I was reading it, and it was really crazy and really brutal. And as far as Michael Frost goes, he is the protagonist of the Modern Times chapters who's kind of obsessed with Lizzie, and he's the son of a guy who owns a snowmobile place in the town that was once the 1950s preface. And so Michael has an idea for a small party, himself and his friends going on a... I think that aspect of the book is cool, even if I didn't understand the connections at first. And then another thing I liked was the names for the people and places in the series. Fear Street, Shady Side High School, Fear Street Woods, Fear Island, Brendan Fear, etc. Cool, right? And I love how this series is making me remember how much I loved R.L. Stein's work as a kid. And then the final thing that I really liked about the book is the fact how intrigued I was between the connection of Michael and Lizzie. Is Lizzie a witch? How is it possible that she has this control over Michael? Is she pretending to like him just to use him in killing this angel guy? And moving on to trigger warnings is total Karen and Ken Ness. Aaron thinks he's entitled to be with Beth, but when she rejects him, his father confronts her father and says Aaron has a right to be with Beth. In real life, people who speak for me without knowing what I really want is a thing that really triggers me, and it just makes my skin tingle, and it makes my blood boil, and I I can barely read books where there are characters like that. There is another trigger warning for an attempted rape scene, which bothered me more than any other scene in the book, and there is a trigger warning for death and murder. By horses, in a very dark and unique way, that's all I'm going to say. And then there was this weird Stockholm Syndrome thing going on, where the girl rejects boy, boy still pursues her, girl falls in love with boy. And that was just a little confusing to me, because... Well, if I explained it to you, then there would be little point in making this video because I want you to read Fear Street, The Lost Girl as well. Moving on to ratings. Amazon rates the book a 4.4 out of 5 stars. Barnes & Noble rates the book a 4.4 out of 5 stars. Goodreads rates the book a 3.6 out of 5 stars. And my rating, 5 out of 5 stars. And as for reviews, Melissa rates the book 4 stars. I used to read R.L. Stein's Fear Street books when I was younger. Loved them. It's nice to read a new one so many years later. And then Tez rates the book two stars, which I don't understand. Only memorable thing about this book is that a person was covered in honey and oats and then starving horses ate the person to death. No rescue from that. And then this girl, Sarah Marie, rates the book four stars. Loved the opening part, but this one felt a lot more mature than a lot of the other Fear Street books in terms of violence and horror, but the ending sucked. And my review, five stars. I loved R.L. Stein's books as a kid, and rediscovering my love for the books is like rereading an old friend. Does that make sense? From the get-go to the last page, I enjoyed every minute of reading this book, even if some scenes were frightening. So anyway, that is all for today's video, so if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button to show some support, subscribe to my booktube channel to get more videos like this, turn those notifications on to be notified when I have a brand new video uploaded, keep on reading, and have a great day everyone!